Hi friends, now we are back again on the dams unplugged with the case discussion and this time I have with me Dr. Saurabh Dakshit and he is a surgeon, I am a radiologist, we will together discuss no, sir, sir. in an integrated fashion a very very interesting case and it is very important from clinical practice point of view and I would say the case that we will be discussing today is equally important if you are a resident in radiology, a resident in surgery yes. or you are a PG aspirant or even if you are a practitioner in India, you are supposed to know about this condition, which we are going to discuss today. So, but I want to keep the suspense alive and I will, you know, we start with the way we start in the hospital with the history and the presentation. I will ask, you know, Saurabh to help us. Thank you, sir. So, if you see, this is a 24-year-old female presenting with complaints of subacute intestinal obstruction. She came to the hospital with a complaint of vomiting intermittent episodes of abdominal distension and today she is presenting to us with frank abdominal pain which is suggestive of intestinal obstruction now if you see in uh, the patient the patient has had several episodes earlier also there's a family history which is suggestive of tuberculosis now tuberculosis in india is a very 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 common scenario so this is a bit relating to intestinal TB causing intestinal obstruction the routine investigations were absolutely normal the lab the laboratory investigations were unremarkable however radiology guided us towards the frank diagnosis so now let us see what uh, how to approach these patients the, fir the first thing that we have available in emergency is USG so we took help of USG and subsequently we went for CT scan because CT scan is the core for abdominal diagnosis. So let sir discuss about the CT radiology findings. Let us have a view. Yes, thank you, Saurabh. So Saurabh, we have a patient with us with history of yes, subacute intestinal obstruction with a family history of tuberculosis, yes. and uh, you have sent a patient to us for an ultrasound and a CT subsequently based on the acute abdomen scenario. Because I am suspecting uh, uh, that this is intestinal obstruction, yeah. probably because of tubercular origin. Yes. And so, you know, it, it would never harm, and I would advise all residents also, it would never harm to look at a chest x-ray also, you know, because although we all talk about big things first, but there's no harm in looking at a chest x-ray. For example, when we look at the chest x-ray in this patient, I, I'm sure you are able to see these calcific lesions. Are you able to see them? Some fibrocalcific lesions here, suggesting some old tubercular, uh, you know, lesions here. And uh, even on the hilum, you can see on both sides some calcified lymph nodes. So... Although, you know, sometimes the diagnosis of a disease is very difficult to make. But these are all building blocks which yeah, will help which us help to us finalize. To so we had the family history, we have a chest x-ray. But let's come to the real thing now. We, this is the ultrasound picture of the patient. You can see some fluid collection here where we have marked as FL. But that is not clear fluid. I hope you can appreciate there are some internal echoes inside it. It is some, you know, some maybe some thick fluid here. And the whitish things that you see are the bowel loops. And can you see the fluid is also extending in between the bowel loops and the bowel loop is like this radially oriented. The, these are the bowel loops. These are the bowel loops. In between you have the fluid and uh, forming like uh, a bit like a... Encysted, uh, this is looking like something which is a cyst enclosing the bowel. Basically yeah. we have now suspicion whether this is a cocoon or no. Yeah. So and plus that you know when you see this interlow fluid we also uh, sometimes feel that you know it could be a inflamed bowel loop which is yeah. oozing out the yes. exudates, yes. exudates leading to that and interlow yeah, yeah. fluid yeah. and you know and you know if you are an aspirant of a competitive exam you know they are very fond of these names so this is what is called as the club sandwich appearance club sandwich, yeah. club sandwich appearance and let's see the ct scan of this patient yeah. and this is the key thing that we want to which sorob you know was already mentioning somehow you know you could see in this the bowel loops are placed in the center of the abdomen can you see them they are like as, as if they are encapsulated in the center and can you see there is some fluid around them but you see a membrane encasing them all around and when we look at the coronal reformat of the same patient i am sure you can now see this is that we can clearly define the encapsulation. There is a well-defined membrane. Like marbles have been gift yes. wrapped. Yes. <laughs> yes. Diwali yes. Gift yes. wrapped. Yes. And there is a fluid around it. And can you see there is a proximal dilatation of the bowel? Can you see the jejunal loop is dilated? So we have evidence of obstruction here on a CT scan. This part is the liver. This is the gallbladder. This is the dilated bowel loop that I'm mentioning here. And this is what we see. So this is what has been traditionally called as the abdominal cocoon. 
but the new name for this would be encapsulating peritoneal sclerosis earlier we used to use a word sclerosing encapsulating peritonitis there are other terms as yes. well sir yes sir uh, this is a special scenario where a cocoon has led to intestinal obstruction now for uh, intestinal obs for intestinal obstruction that is specifically related to a cocoon we use often use the term peritonitis chronica fibrosa encapsulata if you break the term you'll get everything in this this is everything what is that something which is encapsulating and this is fibrous in nature this is chronic over the time and now it has led to intestinal obstruction that is why patient is presenting to you with signs and symptoms of peritonitis so basically a cocoon is a fibrous thickening around some bowel loops which have been conglomerated in a fashion that they have been they have been circumscribed from 360 all the way now let now, us before you know we go on i yeah. wanted to make sure that you see this the is, real cocoon uh, this, this is, is the uh, real silkworm forming a cocoon around it so definitely this, this is, is what look alike this yeah. is look alike <laughs> this is what we saw on the radiological image so before i take saurabh to you know enlighten us more about it i want to see that i hope that you see the you know summary of the discussion so far we saw a patient with subacute intestinal, intestinal obstruction, obstruction family history of uh, tuberculosis, tuberculosis and now x-ray suggesting old tubercular chest in the old tubercular calx ultrasound you know giving us a hint but you know ct has much more delineation capability to show us the thickened peritoneal membrane around it which we could not actually make yes. out on ultrasound but still we got a hint and we saw that uh, club sandwich with the radially oriented bowel loose with interloop fluid. Clinical scenario plus USD yes. led us to and the path. Then the CT is be the one which is beautifully showing us. Yes. And now I also want to make a point here which we will discuss at a later time again. But today the investigation of choice for abdominal tuberculosis is a CT scan. Yes. Yeah. Please, you know, rest assured on this that there is like there is no doubt on it. Once you see this, how beautifully we could see the membrane with some fluid and the bowel loops in the, the encapsulated in the center and how we could do a multiplanar reconstruction yeah. in the coronal plane that is the beauty the of the biggest our advantage CT is today. of doing a ct I'll, I'll, I'll like to add you sir the biggest advantage of doing a ct is because most of the time the presentation is conglomerated bowels with retroperitoneal masses so that is actually enlarged retroperitoneal lymph nodes they yes. are lymph nodes and we are often in a doubt whether this is actually due to tuberculosis or whether they are metastasis or whether it is related to some other primary so the advantage of ct is not only high specificity for the tuberculosis but we also rule out in a same setting that there is no other primary yes. if you see in this case there is no there is no other mass there is no other problem with all the organs simply we have an encysted collection and we have a background of intestinal obstruction but before that patient had had similar many episodes so this we will now take us uh, our discussion towards eps now we'll discuss yes. eps yes and uh, i'll add to a point here is the lymph nodes that we see in tuberculosis are often matted yeah matted and rim enhancing because yeah. of the necrotic center so keep this in mind for your future evaluations now what we now see is a abdominal cocoon that we have already you know f come to an uh, you know uh, conclusion but it is what could be the possible causes w uh, you know although we have in this patient a lot of hints towards tuberculosis but that is not the only cause yeah. so sort of let can you enlighten us on the usual Sim suspects that you would have yes sir. thank you sir uh, most of the time i'll in in a country like uh, you if you have a tropical scenario tropical reason the cause is tuberculosis but this is not the only cause abdominal cocoon is a manifestation of encapsulating peritoneal sclerosis which could be a post surgical it could be post trauma patients who are chronically immobilized it could be seen rarely due to neuroendocrine tumors and don't forget it is endometriosis but 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 this is not correctly associated because we used to have a view that retrograde menstrual flow like that was a thesis for uh, uh, endometriosis was a reason behind cocoon no this is not because had this been a case no of the male would have been affected but this is common scenario in because, males because also. i think because yeah. the female yeah. predominance yeah. initially we, that was seen yeah, so some that, people yes would, sir, would that, that 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 led to us to believe but this is not true most of the cases there are cases where you are not able to get the reason and that is idiopathic yes one of a very common very common scenario is post dialysis that is also seen in post dialysis sle 
and constrictive pericarditis. We treat the patients with propanolol and propanolol is again a drug where we often get to see this. So you should keep this mind in that whenever you are framing your DD, you should keep all these things in mind. You should not blindly go for tuberculosis because in West, we don't have these tuberculosis patients. So you should be aware that yes, it could be seen after dialysis. Yes, tuberculosis is common. It may be malignancy, certain drugs, hemodialysis, even familial causes are there. So this is what is, if you, if you want to look, have a look, this is a long list, but I have told you some general important causes of, and or you can see. In the common, you know, the, I think yeah. the tuberculosis in, is right at the top, topmost part. And, and in the, our patient, we had uh, quite a lot of hints. Quite a lot of hints, patients, uh, profile was suggestive, a lean, thin patient, a female patient, and typically she's having a history, family history, repeated episodes. So that was a bit yes. but keep in mind the other possible causes yeah. uh, that you know this is important for discussed. examinations yes, yes. and uh, you know once we have uh, the workup you know so in the workup you would try to rule out all this yes uh, so when like uh, again i'll repeat the approach towards a patient with eps whenever you have a patient with eps the the core of diagnosis lies in the history as well as the radiology if you ask me radiology, it is CT scan, yes, which is Achilles heel of the diagnosis. CT scan confirms the diagnosis. Now it is our responsibility to approach a patient because there are two approaches for a patient, operative and non-operative. We'll be discussing that. Yes. So now and that leads us to the next question, Saurabh, is like, how would you manage a patient in general if he has an abdominal cocoon? And if it is tubercular, how would you manage? Okay. Whenever we have a patient with intestinal TB or, or in general a patient with presenting to us with cocoon, the first thing is to rule out whether the patient is having obstruction or no. If there are signs of intestinal obstruction, don't rush for laparotomy at the very first go. You should take the patient, admit it, admit the patient, start with the conservative management of NPO, go for rice tube decompression, start with antibiotics and maintain correct the electrolytes so you have to basically resuscitate the patient now if you resuscitate the patient and once the patient responds to it then we go to the cause if the cause is found like in this case it is uh, intestinal tb i'll discuss the management of tb later on but if it is due to other causes we will treat them according to their general profile if the patient is not relieved on the other hand with this conservative management, you will have to take a call, you will have to go for laparotomy. Now in laparotomy, what is done? This is again a question, whether should I go for bowel resection? Because resection and anastomosis is again a big game here. Because if you go for resection and anastomosis, a lot of bowel length will be lost. So this is a fibrous thickening, yes, over the bowels. So we go for just lysis, we remove the peritoneal adhesions, we free the bowel, we don't do anything as far as resection is concerned. Yes, you may go for resection, but this is not preferred option. We just remove the cocoon, we do adhesiolysis and this is what is the management. Now, let me tell you, there are certain patients who don't respond to their management protocol like etiology wise protocol. For them, we have steroids, we have tamoxifen and we have mTOR receptors like rapamycin. So, uh, uh, serolimus, stem serolimus, they are, they, are the, they are the drugs which are being used. But let me highlight in you that steroids are not preferred or tamoxifen are not preferred as a first line approach because they delay the healing. <coughs> yes, they delay the healing, they reduce the inflammatory response and hence they are not preferred. I like to discuss what will be my protocol in this patient also. If, if it is tubercular, yeah. if yeah. it is tubercular, yeah. like we have a lot of yes. hints here. So how would you manage abdominal TB okay. in general? Let me discuss in general first and then I'll come to this point. Because this point, this patient is having intestinal obstruction. But if my patient responds to the initial conservative management, we'll follow the same protocol that we follow for pulmonary tuberculosis. That is a six month therapy, two months of intensive phase and four months, four months of continuation phase. I hope everybody has an idea about tuberculosis. Like I've discussed, you can see corticosteroids, they slow down the healing. So we don't, we don't prefer them. Now you'll ask, why do we then give? We give them because they prevent adhesions. And this so, is already a fibrosing yeah, kind yeah. of a so, disease. So it will, it will reduce down the incidence of future obstructions. Now, as far as surgery is concerned, let me tell you, surgery is not having a major role in management of intestinal TB. It is used 
to manage intestinal obstruction yes which is in this case perforation which is rare yes and and if there is massive hemorrhage which is not responding to our conservative management most of the patients present to you with strictures for them we have stricturoplasty remember we can do two types of stricturoplasty depending upon the length it could be henniquez miculix if the fragment is small and it could be finis henniquez miculix we go for a transverse opening and perpendicular closure so that we have a maximum bowel loop so if you open the bowel like this you close it vertically so that you have a big length and for structures which are more than 7 cm we go for we arrange the isoperistaltic limbs and then we go for side to side anastomosis remember don't do a mistake of taking out a colostomy or taking out a ileostomy because that promotes the growth of a blind loop and this may precipitate down a obstruction or fistulation or maybe malabsorption later on I think Saurabh has, you know, beautifully described the entire treatment profile of uh, abdominal tuberculosis in general, as well as this medical and the surgical management, as well as he's talked about how to approach a cocoon and when to stop the conservative management and when to proceed with conservative management. So we have now, you know, tried our best to give you an insight into a smaller part of a big spectrum that abdominal tuberculosis is. But I feel that abdominal cocoon is something that you know, as an undergrad or even as a postgrad resident, you're supposed to know. You're supposed to know. Even yes. at, at least in radiology and yeah, I feel in, in surgery also, you know, you may get... In scenario, like in, in India, example. most of the cases yeah. of intestinal or SAIO, 50% of them have, have a tubercular etiology. Yes. And you know, that is different from the Western yeah. country. Yeah. So it is important to see it most from of the, the... books. Most you know, of the books are yeah. not describing this entity. Yeah. yeah. Because they are all Western yeah. predominant. So we have to, you know, be aware of it as a Indian postgraduate resident. This is one of the messages that I wanted to give through this video that, you know, please be aware of it. Next time when you are looking at a CT in the uh, hospital, when a patient comes to you with subacute intestinal obstruction, you're thinking of bowel tuberculosis, look out for that. Uh, if you find bowel loops, closely packed, you know, some encapsulation, look out for that membrane surrounding them like we, you know, showed you in this case. And some books even describe that thing that we talked about like as a cauliflower appearance. That, that is what we had shown to you in the image in the beginning. And you have already seen the club sandwich on the ultrasound for bowel, peritoneal tuberculosis that we saw. So one thing I would like to add that what happens, there is, uh, sometimes there is overzealous attempt of residents to treat a cocoon. Yeah. Now what happens, this is a fibrous condition, yeah. patient is having obstruction. Most of the time, most of the time patient is having a SAIO like condition. So patient is not having a frank obstruction. If the fr patient is having obstruction, yes, you have to take a decision. But most of the time, if you start with conservative management, they do response. Now, why I'm saying, because me being a surgeon, it, it doesn't mean that I'll cut everything I get. Or I want to know what not to cut. <laughs> yes. When, when, when you start removing this membrane, actually you are also at risk of damaging the bowel yeah. so that on a background of tb is very difficult to heal and you may land up with a fistula and then you will have you will it's like a no man's land you have yeah. to go for massive resection and then malabsorption so just Obligation. don't be overzealous in doing yeah. a surgery so remember the first line approach even if a patient seems to be having intestinal obstruction just decompress the bowel if the patient improves, start with that ATT. Don't rush for the surgery, otherwise catastrophe can happen. Yeah. So I think on this note, we conclude this video here and I hope you enjoyed this episode of Unplugged. Do write back to us in the comments section on the YouTube channel and the Facebook page. We look forward to your comments and that is what keeps us going. And it has been our attempt on the Damn City channel on YouTube as well as on Facebook to do a video where we discuss things in an integrated fashion where we don't really want you to know the lab finding and the clinical finding we want you to know all of them together so that when a patient comes to you you are able to you know think in the correct manner that is the entire approach for us and i believe that this is the style and frame which the mcq exams are also taking yeah. now they are also going, to, going towards the real, realistic situations rather than, you know, focusing only on the most common, least common we are, things. We are getting integrated questions. Yes. Something, some part is from radiology, some is clinical, and yeah. then we have to correlate. Yeah. So, so I, I hope you enjoy this. Me and Saurabh will look forward to listening to your feedback. Do follow us on the channel on YouTube and on Facebook for more such video. We wish you all the best.